Hello again and welcome back to our course on Excel for Mac 2019. In this module we're going to start to take a look at creating basic formulas and formulas are really the backbone of Excel. It's what it's known for and it's a very powerful feature. So understanding how you can construct formulas is a really important part of learning how to use Excel. Now, again, if you're not familiar with the term formulas, what a formula is in Excel is something that performs a calculation. And that calculation can be from the very simple, so maybe just adding up a set of numbers, to the very complex. And you'll often hear the term formulas and also the term functions. And sometimes I find people struggle to kind of know what the difference is between those two things. So a formula is made up of one or more functions in order to execute a specific calculation. And there are five basic commonly used formulas, and these are the ones that you'll probably find yourself reaching for most of the time. Now it's worth jumping straight across to the formulas ribbon. So let's click on formulas. And you'll see here we have a functions library. And this is where you'll find all of the functions organized by category that you can use in a formula. And as I said, there are five basic ones. There's sum, average, min, max, and count. And I'm gonna show you how you can use all of these and exactly what they do. But the first thing you need to be aware of is where the functions are located and how you can access them. So as I said, up here we have a functions library where you'll find all your functions organized into categories. So it really depends what you're trying to do. So if I'm looking to manipulate the text using some kind of formula made up of functions, I can click on the text drop down and it gives me all of the functions that I can use in my formula. If I click on logical, you'll see all of the functions that I can use in logical formulas. You also have a recently used drop down here, so you'll probably find that things like sum and average, you'll find those in here, because as I said, those are the ones that people reach for the most often. And in my case, that is definitely very true. So how do we go about constructing a formula? Well, the example I'm gonna use here is we have a table of data. So this is a list of order numbers, the date of the order, the amount, the name and also the state that the order came from. And maybe what I want to do is add up all of these amounts and get a total at the bottom. Now for this, I can use a formula. So I'm gonna to go to the bottom down here and click in cell C28. Now when you want to start typing a formula, you need to tell Excel that that is what you're doing. So the way that you do that is by typing an equal sign into the cell. I then need to use a function so Excel knows what to calculate. So in this case, I want to add up a list of numbers and the function for adding together numbers is sum. And you'll see if I type that directly into the cell, it pops up this helpful little list and I can just select it from that list. As soon as I select it, Excel puts in a parentheses or a bracket for me. And brackets are really, really important. And again, in the next module, I'll explain to you why they are so important. But it will also give you a little bit of help as to what Excel requires you to type in next. So you can see underneath, it has number one highlighted in bold. So it's basically asking you, what numbers do you want me to calculate? So all you need to do is go in and select your numbers. So for this, I can click and I can drag down because I want to add up the cell range C4 to C26. And again, that colon in the middle denotes a two, so C4 to C26. That's all I want to add up, so all I need to do is close my parentheses. You must always close off any opened parentheses for the formula to work. I can then press enter, and there I get my total. So with that, we have created our very first formula. And you can see if I click on it again and look up in the formula bar, I can see what that formula is. And if I needed to make any edits, I could go in and I could change these cell references or even change the function. So let me do that. 
What about if I wanted to have an average of these numbers as opposed to adding them up? I can double click up here and I can just change that to average and press enter. And I now have my average. What about if I wanted to find the minimum value in that particular range of cells, so the lowest number in this range? For that, I could use one of the other most common functions, and that is min, and enter. So it's telling me that $50 is the lowest value I have in the range that I've selected. And as you can imagine, the opposite of min, so to find the highest number, is max and press enter. So 175 is the highest number in that range of cells. The final one of those five commonly used functions is count. So let's replace max with count and press enter and see what that does. Now it's given me a total of $23. Now what count actually does is it counts the number of items you have in a range. So essentially I have 23 items. The reason this cell is saying $23 is because I have currency format currently applied to all of my cells. So I would need to go in and change that, which I'll show you to do how to do that in a later section, in order for that to show just 23. But be aware, if you do get something that looks a little bit weird, it's probably due to the formatting that you have applied to that particular cell. So we've seen how to enter those functions directly into the cell. There is another way that you can do this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete out what I have in there and I'm going to perform the sum calculation again but in a slightly different way. I'm going to go up to my functions library, I'm going to click on the recently used and I'm going to say I want to do a sum again of these numbers. So if I select my function from the functions library, as opposed to just typing it into the cell, what I get in the right hand side is a formula builder pane. And this essentially allows me to do exactly the same thing, but I found that some people, particularly when they're first learning how to construct formulas, find the pane a little bit easier to use. So you can see here we have exactly the same thing. It says number one, and it's made a selection for me. So it's looked above where I'm clicked, seen that there's numbers there, and it's added in the cell range C4 to C27. And you can see that cell range highlighted in blue on the spreadsheet. Now I can see that that isn't quite correct because it's including a blank cell at the bottom, C27. So what I could either do is I can come in here and drag the selection up one cell, or I can just jump into where it says number one and change that to C26. Press enter, and I get my result again. So it's basically exactly the same as typing it in, but sometimes it can be useful to use that pane instead. So just be aware that if you're selecting a function from this functions library, it will pull up that formula builder pane, and you can choose to use that or not. Now, one more thing before we leave this module, I'm just going to delete that out again, is you have access to something called AutoSum. And again, this is in the functions library. You can see it just here. And there is a drop down arrow next to that. And what you'll see is those five most common functions listed here. And you could select a different function if you wanted to. So if I wanted to add up all these numbers again, I could select sum and it will essentially make my selection for me. And again, if that's a little bit wrong, you can just modify what that selection is to C26, hit enter, and there we go. Sometimes using auto sum is a lot quicker than going through the process of typing the formula into the cell. So be aware that that option is available as well. Hopefully that's given you a very basic understanding of what you need to do in order to construct a formula and some of those most basic functions that will help you do things like add numbers together, find the average, find the lowest, the highest, and also count the number of items. In the next module, we're going to talk about relative versus absolute referencing. So please join me for that. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. And click over there 
to get the complete Excel for Mac 2019 beginners course. And click over there to watch the complete set of Excel Mac videos in this playlist.